Hi, I want to talk to you about something that's a little bit different than what I usually talk about. This is uh, more in the realm of wine history. Back in the 1860s, there was effectively a plague that uh, railed over most of Europe and killed off a lot of the vineyards. This was referred to as Phloxera, ultimately, not initially. And uh, it was something that caught them totally off guard. Nobody had any idea where it came from at the beginning. They had no idea what to do with it, how to handle it. Everything they tried didn't work. Now, this was not the beginning of the story. This story actually goes back a ways. Throughout the uh, early part of the 1800s, uh, grapes were imported into the United States area. What's now the United States? Well, I guess it was back then, too. And uh, many attempts were made to grow grapes in Florida and various states along the East Coast, and all met with failure. They pretty much determined that there was something in the soil here or in the air, or the water, or the whatever, that would not allow the good grapes, the Vitus vinifera grapes, the ones that grown throughout Europe, to grow and flourish in this area. So I thought, okay, you just can't grow grapes over there, so that's good for our business. We've got the grapes, uh, being the European speaking, of course. And... Uh, Forget the silly Americans, because you know they can't grow them over. They can't grow the grapes. It's just bad over there. Okay, now there's one little nagging thing about this that kind of caught in the back of people's minds at the time was the fact that California was growing good grapes. They were growing the Vitus vinifera grapes in California, but that kind of got overlooked. Okay, so we move forward in time a bit, and we come into the let's see, got some notes here. 1845. Now this is not phloxera. This is something that happened, they started seeing it initially in, in the United Kingdom, then it spread into France and the rest of Europe, it was the, the powdery mildew. This would show up on the grape leaves, it was kind of a dusty thing, and it ultimately would kill the leaves off. It didn't kill the plants, but it made them kind of sickly and they did not produce good grapes. Now this was referred to also as odium or oidium, O-I-D-I-U-M, I'll put that up on the screen for you. And uh, that's its more official name for it. And they, through different experimentation, finally figured out that, well, they could find a chemical solution for it. And uh, sulfur was one of the main things they used, just kind of dust it on and it would kill this mildew off and then the grapes would do fine. So in a sense, like our modern pesticides and herbicides and things, it was a chemical solution. Uh, later on, uh, in the 1860s, is when they started seeing the phloxera it would show the symptoms of plant would uh, start doing some yellow leaves, and then it would just kind of wilt, and then just die very shortly thereafter. They tried all different types of chemicals. Of course, they tried the initial ones, the sulfur, and some other things that they used. None of these were working. Uh, different things they thought of trying, and did try, I guess, is flooding the uh, vineyards, keeping them underwater for a period of time, hoping that would kill off whatever was causing it. All different sorts of things came about that they tried, and none seemed to work partially because they didn't know what they were looking for. They were thinking something, you know, some kind of a fungus or whatever. Well, it turned out the phloxera. Phloxera is a small aphid type insect. It's, it just basically gets into the rootstock, chews it, makes it swell up, and does bad things to it, and basically kills the plant. Once it was finally figured out what was causing it, then they started looking at different solutions. Again, the chemical type things were thought of, the flooding and so forth. None of these were working though. They, all, these little guys would survive all that stuff. So finally, um, they tried grafting. Uh, were they, were, you know, where was this not a problem? Well, it was not a problem in the United States, in North America. Why was it not a problem? Because the grape varietals that grew natively in this country, in this hemisphere, were different than the Vitus vinifera. The Lambrusca, for example, is one. There are uh, several others that grew as just wild grape varieties. Those were not troubled, at least not as much, by this uh, Phloxera aphid type thing. So they got the idea, well, let's try grafting the Vitus vinifera onto the other rootstock. So you take the root from this plant and put the top part from that plant on and then see what happens. Well, surprisingly or not surprisingly, depending on how you look at it, that worked. So pretty much all of the modern grapevines now are grown as hybrids in that sense. They're not hybrids in the true sense, they're a grafting. You take a, an American grapevine rootstock and put the, the stem and leaf, leafy parts from the Vitus vinifera onto it, plant them on the ground, and go. The reason this works is the grapes do not get their flavor, their quality, their characteristics from the roots. 
the roots supply the nutrients, the water, the, the uh, vitamins, minerals that they need to grow, these types of things. Whereas the stem and the leaf and the blossoms, that's what provides your uniqueness in grapes. So planting, putting a vitus vinifera on top of a, a non vitus vinifera root doesn't really impact the flavor and that preserves the plants preserves the grapes and we do to that and for that very good reason we now can enjoy the wines that we have really grown to love the vitus viniferas so there was a number of other things that were happening at that time that really were affecting the industry but the phloxera is one that i think is really key i think it hit its peak a really a big onset so, I mean, they couldn't ignore it any longer and from 1867 on and, but it took a long time to recover from that virtually all of the vineyards in um, Europe had to be replanted with the grafted rootstock so with that in mind you know we can be grateful that somebody did figure that out and they were got to them in time we did not lose hardly any of the original different varietals of vitus vinifera although there is one that came close to extension we'll talk about that in a different time so in the meantime enjoy your vitus vinifera and cheers well, this channel is wine down with wine well the concept of that is how to relax one of the things i do enjoy doing when i drink wine is just sitting back and kind of thinking about things it's uh you know a contemplative mood i enjoy you know, I was thinking the other day that, you know, really, we are in a golden age of wine. 